James and welcome to episode 2 of the Game of Disco podcast. Today we'll be discussing VR and the PSVR 2. I'm joined today by social media maestro Harry. Later Hello. on Harry. Hi Harry. Later on Harry and Swanee will be interviewing Ubisoft developer Adrian Lacey. Take it yes away, we Harry. did. Very nice guy Adrian, yeah. Had a good cool. chat about um, VR so that should be interesting. Have a listen. Excellent. Looking forward to that interview. So um, what's going on Harry? Tell us about yeah, the, not uh, much. Yeah. I've been playing on um, the new Pokemon Snap game. Okay, um, excellent. Really good fun, really nostalgic. Um, but you know what I realised? I am old. I don't recognise any of these new Pokemon at all. I'm not even sure. Like, is that a Pokemon? Is that part of the scenery? What is that? I yeah. <laughs> How many Pokemon are there now? There are like nearly a thousand. It's too many. <laughs> just too many. I mean, I mean, it's just it's just gone on and on and on. Like when, it has. Whatever... How long has it been running now? Just it was never ending. Since ninety nine, I think. Yeah. Huh. Anyway, how about you? Um, so completely different. I never really got into the Pokemon craze, but um, I've been playing Yakuza, so I'm on Yakuza Kiwami. That is quite different, um, yes. Very different, but loving it. Really, really good. I mean, I still don't really understand the whole story because it's so hideously complicated, um, and all the interfamily rivalry. But it's just great wandering around Tokyo. A bit, albeit a sort of virtual Japanese city. Yeah, no, I'll bet. Um, Must be fun. It's, it's good fun. Really good. Lovely place. Or in real life, I mean. Yeah. I'm looking forward <laughs> to visiting at some point when we're allowed. <laughs> yes, when the world reopens. When That'd the world be reopens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, nearly finished last level. So looking forward to Excellent. That. Well done, you. So, Harry, did you. Um, Play, did you play, you played the original PS VR, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I love the PS VR. I play it all the time. Um, they did very well to try and cobble together old technology like the PS Move and make VR and make it affordable for your average person because it didn't have to involve buying a whole new thousand pound computer and a five hundred pound headset. You could just buy the PS VR. And yeah, the games were fun. You know, mostly sort of short form things with just experiences to show your friends. And that's what I think VR should be because it's it's best place for that, you know. Have you tried it? Yeah, yeah, tried tried it ages ago. Um, I I think when it launched, I had a demo of it. Um, cool. And yeah, really liked it. I don't know why I didn't get one. I think I just, I think I was just waiting for them to to change the technology. I'm not really sure, but I think it was content maybe. There were yeah. games that really, you know drew me in i mean they're kind of they're entertaining for a bit but i'm not sure sure i was waiting for that killer game basically yeah not not long form really is it exactly there's a, there was a gangster game that's quite good the name i don't know if you remember the london heist that's the one that was that was great that, that was, was great fun. fun yeah i mean i think you know sony is clearly not done with vr yet i mean other people yeah. might be less keen on it but i mean oculus is still pressing ahead with things there are new headsets coming out all the time and so have yeah. i've um, but yeah, PSVR 2, it's got some great rumoured specs, um, a single cable, which will avoid all the faff with other cables, oh, which is great. So much better. That'll be so <laughs> New much controllers. Better. So yeah, I'm excited. Um, I think that'll do some good business. That'll be good fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think so. Um, do you know, are there any games? Have they announced any games yet? Not do yet, they? I don't think. Um, it's okay. still early days. This won't be out for like a good year and a half at least. But you know, no rush. Can't get a PS5, so they might as well take their time and, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, because I think it's rumored 2022 or later. Is what I saw, at least. Which was at on least. Tech Radar, according to Tech Radar. But, you know, and that's assuming you can get one at launch, right? <laughs> well, touch <laughs> wood. <laughs> touch wood. I'm going to put my order in early. Can I put my order in now? I want to pre That's a hell of a pre order. <laughs> I mean, I can't keep up there. We're not supposed to do pre-orders, are we? Because pre-orders apparently hurt gaming for some reason because then developers what? don't put as much effort into them. Yeah, this is like the new thing. Like oh, People say don't right. pre-order games because if you pre-order a game, a developer will rush to get it out to make the money they know they're going to have and um, often cut right. corners and things. People suggest, you know, get the game a few weeks after release because at that point they've worked out the bugs, you know, and they're not rushing to get it out and there's no you know, crunch on the developers. So, yeah. I don't know. I heard it on social media, so it's probably all lies. Probably. Probably all lies. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm still waiting for my PlayStation 5, but this isn't the... 
We're not talking about that today. <laughs> one month. One month, you'll get it, and we'll be able one to announce month, it, and you'll be it. so excited. I'll be so, as soon as I get it. I yeah, I'll be I'll be talking a lot about it. I'm very excited. Wouldn't blame um, you. Great, that's good. Have you played? Have you played any of the use the other VR like um, HTC Vive? Yeah, I, I tried them all. Sort of. I used to run a YouTube okay. channel with a chap, about, and we specialised in VR early on. So we had the uh, the Vive and the Oculus. And I mean, I love the Vive. The Vive was great because being able to, you know, move around as opposed to be seated was a hell of a thing. Really good fun. Yeah, um, incredible. Again, you know, some great games, but long form, they're just not ideal for like wearing a headset for that long. It's just yeah. painful and it's not ideal. But, you know, they'll get there. And I think, you know, if they keep working at it, it'll only get better. So we shall see. Yeah, we shall see. I didn't, I, I've, I've enjoyed playing the um, HTC Vives. I played it again. It was demo. I think it was a game show. Um, right. And I, I played it. I had a demo of it when it first launched and I was like, wow, it just blew me away. I thought this is absolutely amazing. But again, yeah. it was just the content. I mean, the, the, there was an art game. I think it was like a sort of artist thing where you can tilt brush thing, and that was brilliant. Tilt brush, T thank you. Tilt brush or paint that brush? Was brilliant, really, really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was just like a, a really fun tool. Just a fun. Uh, thing. I, yeah, yeah. I, I believe one person set the record for the longest time in VR and did about twenty-five hours in paintbrush VR or tilt brush VR, whatever it was wow. called. And um, yeah, just spent the time painting in VR. I mean. Why not, eh? Yeah, I mean, quite satisfying. But yeah, I was looking for something more actually. I played some of the action games. I think there's a VR arcade in Brighton that I went to. Oh, yeah. I played a couple of like action games there with HTV. But yeah, they were quite, yeah, they're just too short form, just not. Yeah. I wanted something meatier, not kind of I mean, just plug and play for 50, 10, 15 minutes. There was a great one I tried called Space Pirate Trainer. That it's yeah. like on all of the headsets, the and that is that's genius. That's just that very good. simple. You know, you're shooting yeah. at things, and it escalates, and yeah, fun, just good fun. The Oculus, I haven't, I haven't really played much. Is that quite? It's kind of in between, isn't it? In between PlayStation VR and HTC. HTC well, I mean, the Oculus was obviously supported heavily by, um, was it Kickstarter or it was one sort yeah, of it was, funding? It, was a, it started platform. as Kickstarter. That's how, exactly and that's how it started, Kickstarter. It, it just blew up, you know, it got really a lot of support for it. So um, I think that's why people were so keen to try it and support it because they helped make it, in effect. And then they got bought by Microsoft, didn't they? No, sorry, uh, Facebook. 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 Yeah, Facebook oh. bought them. One multimedia conglomerate or the other. They're all the same. <laughs> so I'm surprised we're not all wandering around with headsets on our face. Bra Facebook branded headsets. I mean, I'm disappointed that the um, Google Glasses didn't take off. I, th I thought those had potential. Those were cool. Yeah, they were yeah. really, they were really, they definitely had potential. I think mix they of VR didn't and AR. Too much. Yeah, and also very cool. I... Snapchat yeah. tried to do yeah. some <laughs> for some reason. They did. <laughs> the, the lenses, the lens, yes. Snapchat lenses. Yes. Um, I mean, we we discussed that a bit more in our interview. Find it a bit creepy, so. don't they? Oh, okay, that's interesting. Cause can can you blame them? Odd, don't they? Yeah, exactly. Because it's a bit odd. Because you're like, okay, this person's. Could, are they recording me right now? I mean, it, it just. I think it's good with new technology, it takes a while for people to adopt mm. it, don't they? Mm. True. Um, I mean, I still find it weird with wireless headphones, um, with my AirPods. Talking. Fair, fair. Because it's just like, and when I see people and they're like, are they talking to themselves or are they actually just talking on their microphone? Sometimes, you know, where I live, you never know. I mean, talking so. to myself, I'm the only one that makes sense. So yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shall we do the news? Let's do the news. Go for it, Harry. Take right it Righto. I mean, so not much has happened this last month, to be honest. It's all still a bit quiet. Um, I guess Corona had a lot to do with that. Um, but yeah, the big news this month is that Sony did a massive U-turn on the PSN store, on the PS3 and PS Vita, because people were in uproar. They were going to close right. it down. You couldn't download your games anymore. And um, yeah, people said, no, no, stop this. And people raced to download games. But they've suddenly said, you know what? No, 
we'll leave it open for a bit longer. Um, but they are closing the PSP oh. one, which is very sad. I love the PSP. It was a great console. Ah, oh, yeah. I never got in. I never really got into it. I could see the potential. I mean, that yeah, was the, the thing of my childhood. You know, taking uh, it okay. on long car journeys, but playing Final Fantasy VII on the go. Oh. The dream. Other news. Um, so the, yeah. there's been an announcement: a House of the Dead remake um, for oh, Switch. No way. I know, right? That could be exciting. Oh, wow. But sadly, no typing of the ha- sorry, typing of the dead game just yet. Um, no, what, what? Sorry. Typing of the dead. I know. Oh, typing of the dead. You know the oh, one with the, yeah. the keyboard when you have to type yeah. words on a keyboard I in remember. order to I shoot remember. zombies. We had that. We used that at the game of disco. We, we do. We do that we quite did, occasionally. Did, so um. Yeah. Yeah, and that's. Uh, oh. That's good fun, you know. That was good. That is good fun. Yeah. yeah definitely. Um, what else happened this month? Uh, so Sony did a new AI patent where games can play themselves for you, which seems quite what? odd to me. Yeah, it's like you can just leave the game playing itself, basically. I can't and then make... maybe just stream it on Twitch, right? And I, I guess. But look. <laughs> it's like Twitch with lazy people. Instead Why of what? Rather play the game, you just stream it on Twitch and watch your fan base go up. I mean, to each their own, I guess. I, I don't get the appeal of streaming in, in the first place. So, so <laughs> watching yeah, a computer yeah. play the game, <laughs> watching someone else's computer play the game I, right. uh, is that. beyond me. <laughs> so you just you just let it run and then you just watch it? Apparently so. Happen? We'll see. More details are quite soon, I assume. Like, how do they come up with this? I mean, where do I don't they... know. It, it's Sony. They, you it's know, they bizarre. are bizarre. Indeed. Uh, what else? So, new releases. Yeah. Uh, okay. On this last month, um, Resident Evil The Village has come out. I have not tried it yet, but I've heard good things. Okay. Obviously, um, Pokemon Snap, a new, the new version. That's good fun. I can recommend that. It really is enjoyable. Okay. Um, and Subnautica Below Zero, a sequel to the Lovecraftian horror game, which was quite well received. Okay. So, yeah, that could be interesting. Um, I've not played it, but I could... We'll let you know what it's like. Um, maybe try and do some reviews next episode. So big, so big, big horror focus, basically. Yeah, I mean, the first one was like an indie darling. It um, it, it really took off. Um, you know, and uh, I guess there's enough appeal that they wanted to do a sequel to it. Um, also, I mean, the big, big news is that a Nintendo Switch Lite is coming out in blue. Ooh. I mean, exciting, right? A whole new color <laughs> for a console. Wow. It's living That's the dream. Good. Living the product, dream. Product extension. Yeah, to just touch. Extension. But I <laughs> also like. Why would you get the light? Just because then you can't connect it to your TV. I don't know. I, I guess I'm it's bit... designed more for kids. Yeah. Because you know you don't want to drop things and break them and or not plug into right, a okay. TV. I, I don't know. For like a bit more money, you can get one that you can then plug into your TV and use. I mean, they'll make anything. Like... I, I guess cost. Yeah. It's cheaper, so that's something. Yeah. True. Yeah. Ho hum. Ho hum. Shall we move on to the interview? Let's let's do it. So, Wonderful. Um, yeah, we've got a really good interview lined up. So it's going to be Harry and Swanee um, are going to be interviewing um, Adrian Lacey, who has already said is a Ubisoft developer, um, and they're going to be chatting um, all things VR. So yes, a really nice guy, really interesting yeah. stuff. So um, yeah, but I will wave my magic wand and I will turn Swanee in. Sorry, I'll <laughs> cut there. <laughs> I messed the joke up. <laughs> do it again. Do it again. Okay. Go for it. So, yes. Um, great interview coming up. But um, I will wave my magic wand and turn James into Swanee. Our guest today is Adrian Lacey, who is developer for Space Junkies at um, Ubisoft. Ubisoft Montpellier. Adrian, thanks for coming yeah. on. Much appreciated. Cool. Here I am. Ubisoft Montpellier, South France. Great place. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, glad to hear it. And how are things over there, dare I ask, regards to COVID? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're still locked down pretty much, so it's, you know, but we just get used to it. I mean, oh, you know, when you're in development, it's a little bit different because you kind of work virtually anyway. So it hasn't been, a, it, the first couple of weeks were a bit weird, uh, but you kind of get used to it. And we all work sort of, even even in the office, people talk via Teams and things like that anyway, even when they're sat next to each other. So it doesn't, uh, yeah, know, developers aren't always the best uh, do you know it's yeah. interesting that <laughs> I was going to say it's interesting that because a lot of developers, as, as you're probably going to say, it, are quite sort of you know used to working <laughs> insular anyway, you know. And I think there's there's been 
obviously there's been a lot of different upsets up around the world, but um, a lot of developers have managed to, to work quite well from home. You know, I've seen that from obviously my position and, and kind of all credit to you guys for, for keeping it going, really. You know, there's a lot of good stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think brilliant. generally we had uh, this. It's, 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 it depends on the phase of where you are in development. If you're in sort of conception, it's a, it's a bit difficult. You know, because obviously that's where you're sort of iterating the idea or coming up with an idea. So you, you tend to chat a lot more and just bounce off each other, which is a bit more difficult when you're on sort of video calls or what have you. Uh, when you're in more pre-production production, you're going through, you know, you, you kind of have a clear vision of where you're going. So it's, it's it's a little bit more fluid, as it were. And then it's, you know, it's 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 more a, a, on a mental level. It, you know, sometimes you need to just see someone's face. <laughs> Yeah, no, I bet. Yeah, but I mean, speaking of virtual, it is a virtual reality game. Um, how did that come about? Was that um, the game first, the concept for it, and then you made it for VR, or just wanted to make a VR game and thought, what can we do? And that's well, made the, it that the, way. Yeah, I mean, the team were, were, uh, that I that we have in in Montpellier, we're, we're, it's quite a tech design team. Uh, so originally, we were asked, okay. you know, like, look, you know, VR is coming through. Uh, and we'd already played with it a little bit on Daydream. We did like a rabbits game on Daydream. or well, another team did a rabbits game on Daydream. So we were just looking on Google's uh, device. And we were starting to look at sort of the DK1, the DK2. Um, and, and yeah, ah, sorry, Oculus. Oculus. <laughs> and, uh, and um, obviously the, the, the team I work with, um, we're, we're sort of, we do a lot of research, technical research, and uh, a lot of motion gaming research. Sure. So it's, uh, it's guys who looked in the early days of uh, early days of things like the Wii Remote or the Kinect and things like that. So motion gaming. Um, so I, so for us, yes. really, what we started looking at when we first started looking at sort of the VR devices, they didn't have any controllers, or they had a, a pad, yeah, or a keyboard. Um, and sure. then as we started hearing whisperings and seeing the stuff that uh, Valve were doing um, and the the motion controllers, we started saying, okay. L- it's getting a bit more interesting now. Let's have a blast at it. Uh, so we just so we yeah, really no, just sure. started prototyping um, a couple of ideas, and and because of motion games, it's interaction, so it's movement. Um, so if you, I, I don't know, you might remember. I try. I worked on just dance and stuff. So um, so oh nice. So, Those so are fun it's, games. it's <laughs> movement and stuff like that's really important to sort of. Uh, players and you know the obviously it releases dopamine, uh, norepinephrine, and uh, serotonin, all those kind of things. Uh, yeah, and I'm sure. Does. So <laughs> you know it's expressive. Uh, once you give your hands to a player, uh, once you have that sort of corporal expression, it, it becomes a powerful tool, particularly in VR in terms of immersion. Yeah. Yeah, I think like with the PSVR especially, um, they're trying to make use of older motion technology in order to compete with the Wii. Because, of course, the PS Move came before the headset. Um, they were like using lots of old technology and combining it together to make the PSVR work, which is quite impressive, but I imagine quite restricting yeah, at times. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think what's the sort of... Uh, so, Sony, I think Sony had a couple games that they came out uh, that you know, were really... Low class. I think it was called Heist. I think that was one of them. Uh, that, was, that was amazing. It was, it was very yes. similar to... Yeah. The I mean, VR Heist. That was brilliantly done. I think in terms of... Uh, at that first stage, I think Oculus really dominated with their controllers. Valve is, Valve, Valve's were a bit bigger um, in the early days. Yeah, and no, I, I tried that. The old, um, what was it even called? Just the, what was the Valve, Valve device called? I only I know, remember. I always talk about code names, so I'll get in trouble if I talk about it. Code names. <laughs> so I'm not even going to say it. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, um, really wise, really wise. I was thinking back to, like, this something in this I used to do, you know, events manager now, but I used to do experiential roadshows tours, all that sort of stuff. I'd be on stage at the clothes show oh, yeah. promoting iToy, you know, and getting people to come up. And, oh, those were great, weren't they? I love those. Yeah, like that. It's interesting, A, to be interested to get your kind of take on future projects. I'm a big fan of, um, you know, looking at what's gone before, how that's adapted for going forward, it's like 3D. Everyone's trying to do 3D for, what, 100 years or more, and it just never takes off quite. And there's something about iToy, Connect, motion control gaming that just, it, it, we did it really well, obviously, with darts and, you know, that kind of, but then again, we is it's more of an interactive board game for me, you know, something for the family to drag out when they want that. So for Olympics and stuff, that's cool. But for me, that's something about the VR market just hasn't grabbed yet. And I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're looking into some, some pretty cool stuff but you know how do you feel that's going to go what's the 
what's the thing that's going to make it to um, VR? I th- I think? You know, when I first, because we, we obviously go through this in our heads, like what works, what doesn't. Um, we were working, at, I remember the, mm. obviously the iToy and, and um, games like that, and even the Kinect to a certain extent. Now there was one. There's there's a theory. Now I don't know how. <laughs> I have this theory. Uh, I don't know how true it is, or I, I probably can't prove it through data. Um, but um, one of the reasons I I believe that the we works so well, and I can take I took this from Just Dance, and we did a rabbits game as well, which was a co- compilation of party games. Um, as soon as you take you have something in your hand. Uh, the interaction or the feedback that you can use with that device is much stronger. Um, so if you play Just Dance on Connect or you play Just Dance on Wii, it's more fun on Wii. Now I can't tell you why. It's kind of sure. like it's just it's kind of like because um, uh, you're grabbing in the middle of nothing. Uh, the human body's touch is a massive sensory element, and if you look at you remember when force feedback came out on controllers and stuff like that, the vibrations it yes. it, it, it adds that <laughs> it, it connects uh, humans to the virtual world. It's it's really important, um, and if you I mean, definitely more yeah, interactive, I'd say. But it, even your, your brain, it allows you to trick your brain. I mean, I know some of the stuff we were doing, we were we, we work on VR. We started doing things where you could get a sensation of weight just by doing uh, visual shifts. In other words, not lag, but uh, kind of I give the illusion like you're pulling on something. It's hard to explain this by voice, but uh, when you pull on an item, you can give the sensation of weight if you just let your hand drag a little bit on screen and you vibrate. So it loads a little... Ch- so, so sure, there's loads of little tricks that people are starting to learn uh, with VR. Uh, and I think in the early days, what was happening, uh, people were just taking a normal game and then just putting it in three, 360 degrees uh, or in a sphere or what have you. So there, there's, I don't think there's been many true breakthroughs using that platform fully. I think from a storytelling, yeah, I no, think I, from I a storytelling point of view, I think we've only scratched the surface in terms of immersion. I, I know I saw Colette won, uh, 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 won an Oscar, which I think is interesting. Um, I think I also think that there's still not the games. There's too there's too many, I guess, ports of older ideas that are just on VR today. Uh, you haven't got that one that's just sure. you just go. I mean, I guess Half Life Alex was was a good start, but it's still Half Life Alex. It's still a linear story. It's it's really well done. But it's still it's still just yeah. a, a normal video game, and I think people are looking uh, have only looked at that device as just another outlet for video games. You know, that's their first port of call because the video game uh, industry is bigger and what have you. And I, I don't think it's been fully exploited. I think scientists are using it a lot more. I think training B two B stuff. Uh, I think it, it, it'll happen. I think Sony arriving with new controllers, new headset will make a big difference because they'll 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 hit a new audience. I think o- Oculus has been a bit slow off the uptake in terms of uh, the consumer business, you know, the retail side of it. Uh, even though their device looked four hundred bucks and you've got like a standalone VR headset, I mean, you can't <laughs> honestly. It's it's pretty impressive. They've done a phenomenal job there. I suppose that's the key there is um, really in cost down, isn't it? Because that's one way the PSVR differed, which was you had the existing PS4 console and you just added the PSVR to it. Whereas um, the Oculus and the Vive, yes. it was called, I forgot that earlier, um, you you have to have, obviously, have the high-end computer and the device and the cost starts to get into the thousands, which was a bit And, and you're plugged in. I mean, even the, the, the new tethering system, uh, the, what do you call it, the, the, the new link system from Oculus, which which means you don't have, it's you have an air connector, an air link, I think it's called. Uh, and basically, even with your standalone device, uh, you can just uh, use your PC. So you can have the same power of your PC, but there's no cables. Uh, and I think even that... Yeah, I mean, I think that is the case. Because I remember man. the original setups, it was hysterical. We were like, like three, engineer, three engineers <laughs> plugging lasers. And like, it was a nightmare. It was, it was, it was, it was horrendous. But I think... Yeah, I can imagine. And we did that. Um, what was we were the, the Oculus Lord event? Was uh, that that's where right. Yeah, yeah. Was <laughs> yeah. Is that where you were showing it off? Do you remember that <laughs> thing? Sorry, we with all, that, with all the the lasers <laughs> and all the, the little uh, pot things. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, you, you essentially need they, a warehouse. They've removed that friction. I think. I think what it is is they're slowly removing friction. And I th- and I th- I think what, you know. I I don't know. I'm a bit. I'm, I don't know how old you are, uh, but <laughs> uh, but you know. I think it's it's also an age thing. I think, you know, if you remember 
BlackBerry shift to touch screens. And I was working, I was, I mean, I remember when touch screens came out, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I think I was about, I won't say my age, but a long, long time before Apple came out with a touch screen, even Microsoft years before had its own tablet yeah. and it never really worked. I mean, Microsoft had their original tablet years before Apple. Um, and touch people were just a bit, it was a bit laggy. It was, there was still friction. People weren't used to it. And I remember when Apple came out and BlackBerry were out and you had your keyboard and people were like, oh, I'm never going to give up my keyboard. Never in a million years. Touch, never going to happen. And it took like five years before really everyone just shifted. And I think, you know, VR is not that old. It's, it's, I mean, Space Junkies came out 2019 or it's two years ago. Uh, And a handful of games, smaller games before that. So it's not even five years old, you know, it's, it's, it's short in the, in the global context. So speaking of Space Junkies, um, obviously it was made for the Oculus first, then you ported it to the PSVR. Um, how was that process? Because I imagine the control mapping must be uh, quite tricky um, with the controller versus the move remotes. Yeah, like I mean, the, the I mean, we were PC first, uh, so we were already on uh, Vive. Uh, PC and, first. And so obviously we had the power uh, in terms of graphics cards and stuff like that. Uh, and we, ha- we were, because we developed from the ground up specifically for VR, uh, our whole mindset was friction, frame rate, motion sickness. Um, that was, and you know, how do we do interactivity? How do we, you know, it was very much uh, a priority for us because motion sickness was such a big barrier to entry for a lot of people and we were full locomotion. Um, so when we went, yeah, so, I mean, when we, sorry, carry on. Sorry. No, I was going to say that is um, quite the problem, isn't it? Especially with um, single player games or longer games, you can't really stay in it too long. So maximum playtime well, is quite can, limited. And, and there's a, uh, I can't remember the word in French, I know another word in French, but there's an, a, a custom, uh, not custom, uh, custom uh, you, you become used to VR. Uh, you get your sea legs as it, as it is. I mean, that's the only way I can explain it. You do, the more you play, the more you get used to it. Uh, I mean, I know if I take, I, if I put a headset on after a while, the first couple of, you know, 10 minutes or whatever, I'm a bit like, whoa, you know what I mean? I, get, I have to get used to it again. Uh, and I think um, when we moved to, I mean, there's a big thing with frame rate. So we were at 90 frames per second, uh, 90 hertz, uh, and that's like two hours at 90 hertz. So you you have a technical constraint there. You know, you it's a double render essentially if you if you look at it like that in a non technical way. And then when we moved to PlayStation because of the power, you you were at 60. So all of a sudden it's a little bit slower. You know, um, so, so you've got to be a bit careful sure. in terms of motion sickness and stuff like that. There's not enough power. Once, once you start getting the moves as well, I mean, the Oculus did a, a really good job on their controllers in terms of design. Uh, they were very, they were really comfortable. They're really intuitive. And then you had to go sort of backwards to the move, uh, which was, I don't know, it was nearly eight, 10 years old, the moves, I think, when they came. Yeah, I think it was around around. Yeah, really old. Yeah, really old. Um, so the tracking was was much diff- more difficult because it was a camera tracker on the ball, the balls. Um uh, Yes, the the blue balls yeah, on the right, uh, controllers. Yeah. It's quite, it's quite <laughs> something. Right. And, uh, and the other thing is... is it, oh. Hang on, fellas. I remember when you had to you put a blue ball in a mouse to make it move <laughs> around. Come on, that's... Well, not that old. That's old. <laughs> um, and then, that's true. The, and, then, uh, and then the moves... The thing, the thing is, is we, we had a... You could really... You, a lot of players stood up. So even on, on Oculus or on Vive, people, you know, you were, you were tracked in a 360-degree space. But on PlayStation... You, you had to face the camera. As soon as you turned away, you lost tracking. So, yeah, I mean that was a huge limit, wasn't it? Um, there's rumor that they're going to not have that in the PSVR too. But uh, that that cable always tethers you to something, and that's well, not the, ideal. And and the tracking. You, so basically, we were a, were a, a nav grab shoot in a virtual in a sort of a, a spherical battlefield. Uh, that's what Space Junkies essentially is. So you're constantly grabbing your gun behind yeah. you or your sword behind you, or you're, you know what I mean? You're, 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 you're hiding the bull to a certain extent around your body, but as a player, you don't, you know, you don't want to have that friction. And what happens is you, you'd lose a bit of tracking. I mean, we overcame it a lot of the time because we used to sort of cheat. Uh, so even if you lost tracking, <laughs> we'd say, I think he's hiding the controller, you know what I mean? And then we'd wait and then capture it once he brought it back into shot. But, but it, it it added some complexities. I think it was it it, it wasn't as easy as I would have liked it to be. But um, and, no, and, sure. You know, but yeah, I mean, great it was, fun it, though. It's a learning experience. You uh, look. It's always the same thing. VR is not going to disappear. 
uh, it'll keep going. It hasn't, it hasn't exploded like everyone, but it's always the same thing. People want expect the, the, the big boom, kaboom all the time. I think mixed reality will add to that. Uh, once mixed reality starts becoming more popular in terms of augmented and stuff like that as well, which you're seeing more and more of. Um, and it's just, an, I think it's a new device. I think that's how you got to look at it. People are looking at it as a, people are looking at it as a replacement of a console and it's not a replacement of a console. It's not a replacement of a phone. It's just a new device. It's a new revenue stream. Hmm, it's Absolutely. the same thing really, isn't it? No, that's always evolved. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, do you know, it's funny just what you're saying there, Ed, about how people grabbing stuff behind them and stuff. I just remember going through some of those tutorials with you, you know, and how you kind of have to lead the players through the journey if you don't have that built into a demo or anything. It's the same with, you know, other titles. If you're not bringing the player through those experiences and what they can do, people never kind of realize the potential of it is you know is there something in that in the storytelling and and helping them to use it in a way that you can say that i mean the 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 i mean because obviously we we were doing it for ages so we were just used to things and uh, because obviously you have your hands in vr so uh, yeah your hands so i'd say hey grab this they'd be like what do you mean and i'd be like well just reach out and grab it so it's just something you would do naturally and the amount of times i'd have to like say no like you see your hands in virtual world, reach out and grab. And it would take them like ages to just understand that they could just, they'd be pushing all the buttons and you're, you're like, no, <laughs> just reach out and use your hand. And it was, it mm. was weird to see how something that is so simple and normal really to explain was still a, a, a massive barrier uh, for a lot of people to pick up. And do you know what's really interesting about that is harking back to what you said earlier about the Microsoft devices. It was only really when Apple came out with, you know, their touchscreen device that everyone, oh my God, this is amazing, you know, because of the way that's constructed, um, the science of it about, you know, following synaptic Absolutely. thinking and things like that, you know, it's so much more intuitive. And I think there's a, you know, there's, we're a generation that got used to MySpace, <laughs> GeoCities, Angel Fire and all of that, <laughs> you know, and then, and then as it's grown, you know, people have developed and developed and we're teaching our kids and, and younger people have to use stuff. So there's generations that come through in that stuff. And I think that's with VR as well is, you know, generations that are now four, five, six years old, they're going to be doing some absolutely incredible immersive stuff. But it's, again, will that be any different to making games for the virtual boy? Like what, where do those big changes, do you know what I mean? It takes a lot for um for adoption to become true. truly domestic and truly yeah i think power, true. power is power is one of the main things wow. uh, i think you know uh, what, one of the big barriers in the old days to sort of 3d or virtual reality or whatever was power um you know but we're so used you know we're already at 4k 8k uh, you know you're not you don't want to go backwards mm. um it's hard it's i think it's hard for people now if they see a device you know but look at mobile games today people are quite happy to play mobile games look at minecraft roblox i think if the experience is strong enough it can still transcend that um but yeah but, i think you know, you're right yeah it, oh, nobody um it appears to think of themselves as a gamer what i was saying was back to the marketing sort of demographic boxes and presentations that we used to do back in 2002 three four um, I'm sure you know, Age, you've seen just as many as I have that are four different types of gamer. And now there's just everybody's a gamer. This is how they play games, you know, whether you're a mobile, whether you play on your TV, mm-hmm. whether you play on your, you know, your Virgin box, where you play on whatever. And I think it's just quite interesting how gaming is just now so prolific through absolutely everything that people do. Um, and that kind of helps, I suppose, helps the, the journey and, and helps things develop into better and more interesting areas. I think, yeah, I think age is a really interesting phenomenon. I think, you know, there's people who are retiring who grew up on video games, you know, like even I look in our studio, uh, we have quite a few people who are like 50, 60 years old now, which was unheard of when I first first started going out of it. Um, <laughs> and, and I think it was, I think it was really interesting to, I think it's interesting to see now our kids are playing and, and it's much more natural within the household. And look how kids interact. Look at YouTube. I remember go back to 2006, people were still telling me like, oh, look, you know, people watch TV on a Friday night at 8 p.m. You know, they watch their program. I don't think my kids even know how the TV works anymore. Um, so <laughs> it's, 
you know, they, if, if I say, oh, we're going to watch a program because it's on TV, they're like, can you fast forward? And I'm like, no, it's really on TV. And they're like, why? Like, what's, what are you doing? It's just weird for them. Uh, they live in an instant world. Um, and I think that... Yeah, I mean, what blew my mind was um, streaming. Like, how did that get so popular? People watching people playing video games. That just <laughs> blew my mind. Dude, I still... I, I love my kids all day. I got, like, kids who are, like, 11 years old there, so they watch these people screaming down the thing, and I'm just like... And, and they're like, yeah, he's got, like, 10 million views. And I'm like, damn, I should have just done that. I can scream down <laughs> playing a video game. It's insane. It's like... Um, yeah, it's, yeah, I, I find it, I, I just find it fascinating. I mean, watching people play is, is insane to me. I, I just, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. I, I don't get yeah, it. Totally. I just don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, but that's the new form of entertainment. And I think it's, but you know, if you see how they, 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 they're literally just telling stories, which I find fascinating because a lot of the time it's just, they're using the game as a, uh, a sort of a, a trigger point to tell a story or to tell a joke or to tell, you know what I mean? Just to communicate. And it's really interesting to see how they use it. They use it as a, as a platform essentially to, to tell stories. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, your vehicle, isn't fair. it? And I think the other thing that I've become acutely aware of over the years is that kids that are playing games use it as second screen as well. So you'll have a headset on, you'll be playing Call of Duty or whatever, and you'll just have a YouTube on a pad that's just clocking over sometimes they're not even paying attention you know and you wonder if that engagement then is any better than the one that's being farmed in a chinese mobile data farm do you know what i mean it's mm. that, what <laughs> is that engagement with those second screens and i think back to our original point i suppose and, and probably round it off a bit is that it the immersive sort of situation you know i want to come home after playing something on the bus press a thing and it's straight on my tv the technology is there for me to do that like i can do that with youtube now you know on my telly mm. stadia should be able to do that instantly and that's it's the uptake you know as soon as you have to get something out of a box or plug a cable in yeah not interested so yeah i mean setup time especially mm. for psvr it just mm. took so long you know but um if they can get that down to one cable as is rumored um that would be great and that'd be easier and um, that might make it accessible for other people definitely yeah definitely. I, yeah i think friction's always a the, the major barrier for anyone i mean people you want to plug it in and, and get on with it uh i, I think yeah. i think loading times are also a, a massive issue I mean, I grew up in, on console. That's a fair point. I, I grew up on, on console, and I think that's one of the successes of sort of the Wii and stuff like that. You weren't, you know, look, on my PlayStation, I, I spend, I get a game. I have, to, I have a really bad connection, generally speaking, with the kids all the time uh, on the internet. But it's, uh, and then I, you buy the game, and then you're going to wait. I've got to wait like two days before I can play it because um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm downloading. Nintendo, I've never had that problem on any console. <laughs> Uh, you get it, you put it in, you play, you know. Um, Got a cartridge, yeah. put the cartridge in, give it a quick blow, and you're done. Absolutely. <laughs> Easier times. Yeah, and I, <laughs> and I think that was one of the, I mean, for, for Space Junkies, that was our big thing. It was like, how do we get loading? You know, I don't want, to, I don't want loading times. Zero friction. And I think that's what, t- if you look at mobile now as well, it's like that friction point. If you have, the way, the way I always give it the analogy is, you imagine you go to a slot machine, you put a quarter in, uh, and then you have to wait while you spin. If you have to wait a minute and a half, you're not going to play that machine anymore. So it's the same difference. No. So, I, I mean, Space Junkies was really good fun when I played it. I really enjoyed it. And um, just those sort of fast-paced, short matches, you know, PvP, shooter, really good fun. I, I love the novel idea of aiming the controller physically, you know, the, the PlayStation controller, and, you know, down the camera and using that as your aim. That, that was brilliant. That was good fun. I mean, we tried it. I mean, literally, it's one of the, like, the engineers was a massive fan of sort of Quake. Okay, so <laughs> that was yes. So there was a there was a, there was a left, definitely a bit of inspiration. We want we want our big thing in VR was everything was slow. Do you know what I mean? Everything sure. was like re, at the time, everything was like slow and methodical and kind of like we were like we just want to you know we just want to see how fast we can you know give it an injection of caffeine uh, and yeah. and see how fast we can go without making everyone dizzy. <laughs> I mean, now that things have sort of moved on, technology has gotten better. Um, would you go back to VR? Do you think or not? Um, yeah, I think I think I'll w- I mean, we, we go through cycles. So I'm on a different cycle. Sure. Um, but I, I think definitely I'll go back on VR at some point, without a doubt. Yeah, I think. The, uh, Wonderful. Yeah. Well, the future is bright. The future is VR. Absolutely. I mean, I think I, I I'm kind of t- I'm looking at a bit of AR stuff at the moment as well. I think that's interesting. Um, I, I just, I love everything that's construction builders, social platforms. I think 
brilliant at the moment. I think it's a great it's a it's a great opportunity for for that social interaction. Uh, I think you know. Mm, I mean, AR is very exciting. Like um, the Google Hololens was it called? That was a, a great idea, but not quite there yet. <laughs> Yeah, I think it'll go. It'll it'll have to. I mean, I saw Snapchat where we're doing a device. I, I saw um, there's a, there's going to be a couple. I wear glasses, so for me it's great if they they look like glasses. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and so uh, you know, I think uh, I think there'll be a couple of devices that come out. I think Apple's going to again. I think in AR they're going to be the ones that that show the way. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. I think they plan 2022. Uh, with a new device, so it'd be really interesting to see what they come up with from a design perspective. So, I mean, probably quite expensive, but you know, we'll cross that bridge when we come no, to it. I think there's no doubt it will be expensive. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, brilliant. Um, I think that wraps up a bit. So, Adrian, thanks so much for coming on. Much appreciated. Oh, mm-hmm. pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> so, wonderful. Good to chat again. I can go. Yes, guys. Go get. Go get my. I've got. I've got. I've got some uh, fruit pastels as well now. So I'm going to get. Oh. <laughs> Spiffing. <laughs> Spiffing. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Love a bit of that. Right. Thanks very much, Age. Appreciate that. Cheers, Pleasure. Thank you. Take care, mate. So, great interview. Thank you for that, Harry and Swanee. And thanks to Adrian. Glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, great guy. Really interesting stuff. Excellent. Um, so, we're just uh, wrapping up now. So, um, I suppose where, so, where can you, how can people find us? Well, and follow us as ever, we are on all the social medias as at Gamer Disco. Um, you can email the podcast at uh, gamerdiscopodcast at gmail.com. And um, yeah, tell us what you thought of this episode or suggestions for new episodes or, um, you know, just let us know. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks, guys. And um, see you next time. See you then. Bye. Bye, Zs.